Hi, I'm Neil Druckmann, creative director. And I'm Troy Baker, I play Joel. And I'm Ashley Johnson, and I play Ellie. So, first cinematic here. Uh, you'll see as we get to the end, I mean, the, this opening image, we wanted to match what we did at the end with image of Ellie. Tommy, Tommy, listen to me. He is the contract I think it's such an interesting thing to start off with, not only in the past, but also to start off, basically. Yeah, that's one of the things we were discussing um, as we're iterating on this opening sequence, because it used to be, it was all seen through Joel's eyes. <clears throat> um, but then it became a lot more interesting to think of it as you're seeing it through Sarah's eyes, because Sarah is really kind of, the whole game is about this relationship between Joel and Ellie, but here Sarah kind of embodies what their relationship is going to eventually become. And that was probably one of the hardest roles to cast, too, with Sarah. Yeah. There, were, there were a lot of people that came in, and I love that this scene was, you know, that's, that was one of the audition scenes. And it was so amazing when Hannah came in that it just, I mean, what, what you're seeing right now, that's, I mean, that was the chemistry. and She was amazing. It's like, kind of like a young, younger Dakota Fanning. Just, there's a lot of, there's an old soul behind those eyes. Yeah, and she could turn it on and off between each take. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, she was crazy. She's amazing. What? It's always a little awkward, right? You have a 12-year-old someone on the set and you're doing this pretty dark well, stuff <laughs> especially with the way that we work too <laughs> all right let's hold off on some of the jokes today guys <laughs> you started helping out with the mortgage then yeah you wish and this piece of music actually uh we were struggling to find which piece to play here uh and then gustavo wrote this thing for the vgas just to play before we show the trailer and right away i heard it, i was like that's got to go in the opening. This is the theme kind of like the relationship between Joel and his daughter that later becomes a theme between Joel and Ellie. Halican Drops. Halican Drops. The name of the band on her t-shirt. And where did you get that? <clears throat> my daughter came up with that. My two and a half year old daughter named one of her dolls that. And we're, we're searching for a name for a band. I'm like, I got a name for a band. <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to be the first time that I've ever seen this scene. This was one specifically that I really didn't want to once we did it. And when we first talked about doing this in the very, very beginning, I knew this scene was going to come. And it was, I told you, I was like, give me a heads up yeah. <laughs> when this day comes because it's not going to be a good one. Well, the, the, the thing with this scene, it's a super difficult scene to shoot. The first time we shot it, we, we did like at least 15 takes or something crazy like that. And then we thought we had it in the can. And well, I thought. I, I... Well, no, we all thought. We thought we, 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 can, we came back to work and we started putting it in. And the, for me, there was just something that was, I felt like we could convey the same amount of emotion with less. Yeah. And it was a hard thing to tell Troy because everybody put so much into it and it's like, we got to do it again. Well, I remember we that We got to come back to this. When you came back and you told me that we have to do this again, you'd obviously, you know, you'll, you'll see why what we're talking about. But this is the defining moment for Joel. It, this is where he draws that line in the sand where he has few moral lines left to cross. I'm so amazed with how well Hannah did. And yeah, I mean, it was, it was difficult to watch just, just on the mocap stage. And we actually had people, after a few takes, leave the set. Yeah. It was, they were like, I can't watch this anymore. And they just took off. But from a story standpoint, it's so important to show just what the violence does and how it like rips apart this, this family. Well, and a lot, um, especially a lot of times in video games, you see blatant violence. But when you personify it and you put it on a face, especially that young face, and you see the, the devastation that just one, one life lost can do. And it's just, I mean, this was such a hard day. Such a yeah. hard day for both of us. I mean, it was exhausting for her. It was exhausting for me. Um, so the op opening credits, uh, the thing with the opening, initially we didn't want to do opening credits. We didn't even have the idea for this. Uh, but the jump felt too sudden to go from Sarah dying to then 20 years later. And making up. We found that when people watch it in succession, they're not paying attention when we start introducing Tess in the world because they're still recovering from Sarah dying. So we're like, okay, well, let's have this opening sequence that can kind of help bridge the gap. And just had the idea of just seeing this time-lapse video of fungus growing because uh, so much of the disease and the outbreak is based on this cordyceps fungus that spread through spores. Uh, so we contacted a group at Sony San Diego who did this whole opening sequence for us and they actually got these fungus 
fungal kits where they grew fungus like in their bathrooms and filmed this over like days to produce this thing. So everything you're seeing is actually it's it's real. It's not CG. It's not. It's all, it's all organic. Yeah, it's all, except for the spores at the end, which are CG. Everything is is real. <laughs> This whole journey is like a dreamlike state, and you constantly see people waking up. And you see this multiple chime with Joel, and it's as if he's like remembering the past. He's yeah. always having these bad dreams um, throughout the game. That was always something that we had to keep in mind when we did this scene, because we shot this before we shot Sarah dying scene. So it's kind of like we knew that those were going to be, in, in, in one way or another, kind of butted yeah. up against each other. I'm but this is such a great thing. Again, this was in the audition thing that we did when we were trying to find Tess. And when Annie walked in, it was just like... She, she walked in as Tess. We saw a lot yeah. of different people for yeah. that. How was your morning? And this was just such a great... Because the relationship you see from going from Sarah and Joel to now Joel and Tess, mm -hmm. it's no. just, I don't know, you, you see everything. Like the house that he was in before was nicer. He looked nicer. And it's not just the years have passed, but those years that have passed. This also kind. gets into something interesting for me as a writer, which is you have a certain notion of characters or how you want the structure to be. And then once it's interpreted through actors like Troy... It changes. Uh, like, I've always imagined this as, as Joel doesn't really care for Tess. He has, like, he's completely shut down, and Troy treated it differently, which is, I think he really cares for Tess, and even though he might not show it. And we just kind of embrace that. And you kind of see that later when, when uh, Tess gets infected. Uh, that wasn't how the scene was originally envisioned, that Joel has such a, a reaction, but it became a lot more interesting to own that. Well, and also how much this relationship changed over, I mean, time and different writing iterations and just conversations that we had about this. Even, you know, within just in the last month or so, we've had conversations about this. It's like, what is their relationship? Because we never define it. And I think anybody else would have put it on the nose, their lovers or, or whatever. There was one note that you gave. It's like, let's, for one specific take, and it said, let's, let's just assume that there was a fight last night over what we don't know. This is that moment afterwards. So it was like this awkward tension between the two of us. But there's no like loving embrace. There's no kiss that Joel and Tess have. It's just such an interesting relationship. And the, the challenge was to try to, how much can we convey just through nonverbal interaction? Right. Our first torture scene. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's with the lovely Robin Edkin Downs, which I was just joking and saying that it's not, yeah. it's not a Naughty Dog game if Robin isn't getting the shit kicked out of him. <laughs> He's been in every game since uh, Uncharted 1. Uh, and we <laughs> just put him through the ringer on this one. Poor guy. It, it was important to show just how far Joel has come. From the, the father you see in the, in the opening sequence to here is a man that is willing to torture someone. To yep. just get but it's what so is essentially money in this world. Right, but it's interesting because he's not... He's, he's like that brutal enforcer. It's kind of like that scene in L.A. Confidential where he's, he's Russell Crowe. She's running the show. She's the, she's the dominating one, and I'm just she's, brought in to be the she's muscle. She's the brains of the operation. Yeah, <laughs> clearly. Stop, stop, stop! Quit your squirming. That's all Robin's expressions, too. It's so great. They did such a great job with the facial. Yeah, it's, it's, it's important to note also, all the facial is hand animated. We don't use any facial mocap. Um, we find that we get better results with our animators. And it almost becomes one to one. Yeah. That's just genius. Here it is. Wait for it. Give me a week. You know, I might have done that if you hadn't tried to fucking kill me. Mode of hesitation. <laughs> it's going to cost you. I can't. We re edited that. We used to show the break, and actually, it was less brutal. Than when we didn't show it. When, when we didn't we show it. Yeah, when it's left to your imagination, it's a lot worse. Yeah, but just you can see the way that his arm's positioned. But yeah, you're right. This this is so revealing, not only about the relationship, but about, again, who Joel has become. To go from a father who just cares about you know keeping his nose down and keeping the job and being playing by the rules to, to being a guy who could just literally break some guy's arm over guns. It's just yeah. crazy. Come on. Yeah, fuck those fireflies. Let's go get them. She loved doing that scene, too. And he loved that. She tried not to smile every time. And I love it's just business yeah. as usual. It's back to it. It's like, all right, so now what? And we're about to meet the very talented Merle Dendridge. Ah, uh, Merle. Now, here's something interesting about this. Again, going back to the audition, that process. We saw a bunch of different girls. Even girls that we had originally seen for Tess, we brought back yeah. for to see. And they're all Merle really good. They're fantastic. Uh, and then, then Merle came in and just... And there I was no question. And I wasn't there for that. And and Ashley can chime in. Ashley, no. Ashley was part of the audition for for Merle. When she came in, it was it was hands down. Yeah. 
It's like, that's Marlene, come on. It's funny that all three of us knew, like, like right away that, yeah, she needs to play Marlene. But you said, we ended up setting up a special thing just for her. Yeah. Because you're like, you've got to see her. I want, I want you to yeah, see we, her. Yeah, we had callbacks, and she, she was busy. She couldn't make it. And we had a special day of callbacks just to bring her, her in because we felt really confident that she could do it. Because I felt like she was the only one who didn't play at all either super tough. Or street, yeah. Yeah, she kind of had Yeah, she really straddled that line. It was so great. But she, we did that first scene in the audition, literally first take, first scene, and her, she exits. It's at the very end of the game, and she turns around and she exits, and I turn around and look at Neil. I was like, I just mouthed, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, and, and I, and I mouthed, I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she did such a great job. This is another kind of thing that I think is... Interesting that's happening in video games where we see two really strong women characters that female characters that aren't being over sexualized. They're just strong women. Here we go. Ellie's introduction. Yep. Uh, and, and this stuff is all <laughs> shot out of sequence. So it's, 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 I don't know, maybe you guys can talk about the process of how you get into that state. <laughs> I'm trying to remember that. I just really like the fact that the first time you see Ellie, you see her knife first. Right. I just yeah. think that's You see that she's awesome. a fighter. Yeah. I actually, I forgot that that was the first time that you saw Ellie. That that was the first scene. Ellie. That just from the get-go, she's fighting. Yeah, but it's, it's not just, it's she's fighting because she really cares for Marlene. That was, that was kind of yeah. the crux of this, is that you see these two characters really care for one another. And I love uh, in such a short time you see between Marlene and Ellie, there's this connection that's right. so important because that has to carry through to the end of the game when Marlene shows up again. Well, even like the, just the positioning of the two people, I mean, it's, it's Joel, versus, Joel and Tess versus Ellie and Marlene. And just like, it's so interesting watching, right, Joel here has like, doesn't even make eye contact with her, he doesn't even acknowledge her existence. Right. She's not crossing to that part of town. I want Joel to watch over her. Whoa, whoa, I don't Bullshit, think that's the best Ellie. Our first fight. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit! <laughs> I was close with his brother, Tommy. He said if I was ever in a jam, I could rely on him. Was that before or after he left? Just you? reminding the player, like this guy you saw in the beginning, Joel's brother, he's changed too and he's been involved. Yeah. yeah. Just get hints of... There's a falling out between the yeah. two of them. And it's just as you go on, you're starting to fill in that 20-year gap. Just cargo, Joel. Marlene. No more talk. Which is pretty true to your writing, too, because I'm like, so what happened here? It's always, what do you think? What do you think happened there? Because <laughs> I have no idea. I don't have the time to write it. <laughs> <laughs> don't take long. And you, stay close. For Joel, right, that's, that's a hint. It's like, I don't want to be around this kid. Right. Because right? Uh, some subconscious part of him knows I could get hurt here. Is it? First moment alone. What does Joel do? <laughs> Time for bed. Takes a nap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> what are you doing? Killing time. I do really like this scene. Well, what am I supposed to do? I am sure you will figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great moment. It's, an, uh, it's another one of those moments, too, where it's like, it just feels like Joel is just always exhausted. Like, this world is just bearing down on him. But I, I, uh, I love that moment, too, where she points out the watch, where we get to establish that, that watch that... Yeah, and that's Sarah something we, we didn't have in the beginning. That's actually something we inserted after the fact. Not for this scene, but there's another scene where we have that. But I also love, like you said, the, the kind of the juxtaposition between Joel and Ellie to where Joel's just, like you said, weary and exhausted, and you have this total opposite, almost antithetical thing of like this naivete and this childlike behavior that's wanting to explore and and shows she, up in this. she's talking about having bad dreams like the idea that they're both carrying this baggage with them and it's how they first connect look how dark it is can't be any worse out there hmm. can it what on earth do the fireflies want with you hey Sorry it took so long. Soldiers fucking everywhere. How's Merlene? What a great moment. He, they, he finally addresses her, finally connects on that level, and that moment's interrupted. Well, it's also the first time kind of Ellie, if you think about it, opens up to him. She's saying, I'm scared, right? That was 
subjects of yeah, that question. Yeah, that's true. Go get some guns. Don't do anything stupid. Move. Turn around, on your knees. It's such an interesting thing that we're like a two hours into the game yeah, and we're still the enemy, if there is one, or just other head. humans, just other people that are on other sides of the law, but there's no infected, there's no clickers, there's no anything. Look the other way. We can make this worth your while. Shut up. I'm tired of this shit. Mm-hmm. What's the ETA? Couple minutes. I love the attention to detail, the rain falling off their faces. <laughs> She's the one that strikes out first. <laughs> then it's interesting how Joel instinctively, when a gun is pointed at Ellie, he acts. Yeah. Again, there's something subconscious that he feels like he has to protect this girl, even if he doesn't realize it yet. Mm. Here it is. Marlene set us up. So this is starting to build up that conflict between Joel and Tess. Yeah. And this is something we struggled in the story for a long time. Is like, how do we motivate this guy that shouldn't really want to do this mission? How do we get him to take on this mission to carry Ellie across the country? And it was through Tess. <laughs> so if we get Tess to really buy into this thing, and then we, you know, Tess gets infected, then she can convince Joel to take this on. At least initially, at least until we can spend long enough time with Ellie so they, they can connect. Yeah. And then it becomes about something else. I'll also say, Ashley, when we were doing this, the way that you conveyed fear, because that's a very scary situation that you're in, because you felt like your back was against the wall. Yeah, this is where we really, okay, this is where we kind of show you the, the difference between Joel and Tess. Yeah, because you're starting to see Tess really kind of buy into this, and you see yeah. some hope. Well, the thing I like about your performance here is you really get the sense of the conversation she's had with Marlene and the struggles she's been going through the past three weeks. She said that they have their own little quarantine zone with doctors they're still trying to find a cure. That's where you see just deep inside how much Tess is desperate for any kind of redemption. Whatever happened to me is the... Remember, Ashley, we were talking about the scene and the idea that Ellie's not sure she believes in this thing. She, she feels this whole thing is insane and ridiculous. I remember that. I believe the direction I gave you was like, imagine you're giving yourself a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you as a person in real life found out you were the cure for mankind... I'm kind of awesome. Yeah, <laughs> <apparently>, you would. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I am the Messiah. <laughs> in that three weeks, you wouldn't. Um, it'd be hard to own that. All right. Now watch your step as you're going up, because it's going to be a little. <laughs> <laughs> a little brat. I love the dynamics of this scene, where it's like Tess has this secret, right? She's bitten. She's not telling Joel or anybody yet. Uh, Joel here for the first, again, he's, he's connected. He can't help it. Oh, is that everything you it's the for? first time he's like saying something semi nice to Ellie. But there's still this layer of cynicism behind it. He gets taken away by that childlike wonder. And this is something we added after the fact the watch. The watch wasn't, we didn't have the watch at the time. Yeah. And Joel was just crossing his arms, and the, I asked the animators to, like, oh, could you just, just flip his wrist and have him look at the watch? Yeah. This moment is reminding him of Sarah. Yes, ma'am. I love that it's almost a warning from Tess to Joel, like kind of like last words. It's like this determination and you're not sure why, what's, what's yeah. different now, Tess. No. No, no, no. Tess's desperation. What happens now? I love like, and it totally comes across without many words or anything just through the expressions on Joel's face which is I've put up with this long enough right. this is over I've indulged you enough Tess this lab of theirs? she never said she only mentioned that it was someplace out west what are we doing here this is not yeah uh, that, that calm pacifying trying to talk some sense into you 
know that you are smarter than this. Really? Really? Guess what? We're shitty people, Joel. It's been that way for a long I time. I love the fact that her character... She knows she's going to die any minute, but she's still trying? holding on to so much hope. Yeah. Home. I'm not that, well, she's different. Right. Look at her bite. She, the world could still change. And it's kind of this theme that, like, this idea of, I've done all these crappy things, but it's all okay if I could do this one thing right. Right. And then that kind of moves over to Ellie. And we see that theme later when Ellie, like, talks about, it can't be for nothing. I got to point this out. Everybody else, because this was a part of the audition scene, too, everyone else did that, don't touch me. They screamed it out. And I love the way she did that, where it was like that first, don't touch me. And it's yeah. just that realization. And I love the fact that Ellie's the one that figures it out, not Joel. Oh, Christ. And again, the, the back and forth Annie's doing between this freaking badass to such vulnerability and constantly jumping back and forth. And she this brought that every right. take. And we're all like, because like, every, every take she's like full on crying by the end of it. She's incredible. You're right. She's such a badass, but so, she was so vulnerable at the same time. It's just such a Shows hard two thing sides to play. of the same strength, too. God, I'm such an Annie fan. <laughs> you have to feel some sort of obligation to me, so you get her to Tommy's. I remember you coming out of, uh, of a take, and, and Troy's like, look at me, he's like, you don't understand, you're not right there staring into her eyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can buy you some time, but you have to run. You want us to just leave you here? Yes. There is no way that... This moment where, like, Joel's, like, in denial, is like, I, there's something I could do, They're not even understanding, like, she's gone, she's already gone, there's nothing he could do right now. And also, she has, and she is just laser-eyed yeah. on Joel doing that, even though she's talking to Ellie. Don't just go! Tess has to snap him out of it. It's like, you know you have to do it. Ellie. And I, I believe this is the first time this. Joel refers to Ellie by her name. I don't think anywhere else in the game he does that. Beforehand. And again, it was, it was important to stay. We stay with, with, with Tess, just showing... Here's her emotionally, emotions finally coming through when Joel, when Joel is gone. I like how just, I don't remember if we did, talked about this, but Ellie has just this, clearly a problem with authority where somebody's telling her what to do. Yeah, for sure. I think that also, I have a problem with authority. <laughs> <laughs> so that came out a little bit in Ellie. Tess, I, I don't even know. Here's how this thing's going to play out. You don't bring up Tess. Uh, yeah, that's so, uh, Joel knows what he needs to do to survive, which is just let go. Needs to let go fast of these things or they will kill you. Don't tell anybody about your condition. That's great. I love that he refers to, and lastly, you to that as her condition. condition. <laughs> you can barely acknowledge. Just We're he's still trying hurt. to search for the term for it. Yeah. You being the whole cure for humanity thing. Good. <laughs> I love that he says note. good, but the subtext is clearly like, all right, good enough. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm going to get out of this kid. <laughs> good chance he could get us a car. Okay. Let's get a move on. Remember the rehearsal for all these scenes? So we, set, we shot, we would shoot these things in chunks. So we'd bring like Earl in and Ashley and Troy and just shoot the here we're gonna shoot the whole Bill sequence. And uh talking to Bill and he's about to talk Hero. about a partner that he's had. Uh uh. We've talked uh there was a question I brought up is like, what kind of partner is this? Uh and I is and Earl asked, is like, is Bill gay? And I said, Well, he could be. I mean it's really up to you. Well, no, you gave this the standard response of <laughs> What, what do you, you think? Because <laughs> uh, I really wanted him to own it. Uh, I, I thought he was when I, when I wrote the, the part, but uh, I really wanted the actor to own it, and he did. I mean, he made that decision to make him a gay character. And, um, and again, it's not something we, we ever explicitly say, except for the magazine that Ellie steals. Right. <laughs> but again, instead of making that a point, and something is just some, a, a cute little piece of exposition. Well, and from a, a, a narrative structural standpoint, what Bill is there to show is, here's what happens when you survive on your own in this world. It's like, 
you're alone and miserable and a little bit crazy, and it's what could happen to Joel if he keeps going down this path of just doing whatever he takes to survive. And also, Bill is there to kind of give Joel the warning. It's like, you go down this world, you care for people, you will get hurt. Hey! What I said to you when we walked down the steps? And that's where Ellie has stolen a bunch of Bill's stuff. <laughs> Ella then flips him off. God damn it. You keep babysitting long enough and eventually... I love that line of fixing the stupid pile. Because I feel like that's such so something a kid would say when you're trying to cover, when you're... <laughs> It's right. nothing yeah. specific. I was just stealing all your stuff. Fix your the pencils over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the one where we abuse Troy. <laughs> I was like, you have to fly, fly face first <laughs> into the ground. <laughs> and he's like, but I should roll. No, no, no. Fly face first <laughs> into the ground. Yeah. It was like, well, if I roll this way, then actually, and they're like, it looks too ninja. We can't do it. So I literally just had to eat shit time after time again. It's like seeing stars. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, just, just, you guys are acting against nothing. There's nothing there. And something we always had to remember was bring the tension back. Left to that, he closes a glass door like that's going to do much. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so that worked out well. Okay. Oh, the thing, the thing I love here is that, oh, well, that, that Bill constantly brings up Tess not knowing. Right. That Tess is dead because Joel doesn't want to talk about it. Right. But here it gets to Joel. And this is something that you guys actually just improvised. That wasn't in the script, this big fight that happens here. It was, it was much more low-key in the script. Yeah, once he brings up Tess, that was something we kind of keyed in on. Jesus. What, do you know this guy or something? Frank. Who the hell's Frank? He was my partner. They're both kind of lying to each other. If you think about the previous scene, right? He's, he's, he mentioned this partner, but almost like I didn't care about him. I let him go. And you realize that's not the truth at all. You right. really cared for this guy and this guy probably left him. Right? Yeah. He's got I love how clinical he is about this. Here. With that look on his face says everything. Well, that turn too that Earl did with, he realizes Joel is looking at him and he's being vulnerable right now and he puts the mask back on. Yeah. And I remember like seeing that moment from Earl. I was like, yeah, we kissed the right guy. Well, fuck him. And then that turn right there. Which again is kind of <clears throat> why, why Bill, what purpose Bill serves in the story is to show that having those moments of emotion, there's nothing he feels, there's nothing but weakness. Get out. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So the Get relationship out. between the two of you is so good. That's yeah. what was great about the cast is constantly having to switch from these really serious, dramatic vulnerabilities to playing tough, right? Because that's what you kind of have to do in this world is, is let your humanity come out, but then learn when to shut that off to survive. And also, you're seeing it, it's very subtle here, but you're starting to see this change in Joel where he's given Ellie more and more responsibility. He's trusting her. Instead of just saying, Stay out of my way. It's like, right. I need your help. This is a good point that, you know, in case people weren't aware of the process. I mean, everyone at this stage, we had such great sets, even though it's kind of rudimentary, but they actually built a truck for us, and we used that truck so many times. But um, I think this was the last scene that we shot with, with Earl. Yeah, and rehearsals, I would try to give you guys as much of concept art and videos that we had right. so you can imagine the space because you have nothing there to act off of except each other that's right you guys have each other that's true and i love this exchange between bill and joel too because you know it's it's joel trying to kind of apologize for an awkward situation and and, and trying to show some sensitivity to him and bill just completely glosses over it and the thing with joel the I kind of admire, he doesn't, he can't come up with the right words. He can never come up with the right words. I was like, it's like a half <laughs> sentence. He's like, so, uh, I, uh, uh yeah. <laughs> and Bill kind of finishes that for him, but it's, it's which, just, which really helps my writing. <laughs> 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 this theme comes in here because to show Joel's now alone with Ellie, but the relationship has changed. 
This is, this is starting to become that theme we heard in the beginning with Sarah. Now we're getting into the first scene we ever shot, and this is your guys' edition right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was the first audition scene when I came in, when I read for you guys, along with another scene that I don't know if it's... In the it's, game, or it's not in the game. It's, a little it's bit. like the scene with the Walkman. Yeah, the scene with the Walkman. There's a scene. Yeah. There was a the scene kind of like it, but it's it's pretty get different. Uh, back at Bill's. I mean, all this stuff was just lying there. <sighs> what else did you get? Well, and I especially love this because, especially at this point, we had no idea Here. who Let's Bill really was. Started. Is actually before my we, how many times did we come back to the scene? Like God, at least three times. Yeah, at least three times. I love, I love what she says. I was like, hey, you know who this is? <laughs> and oh, it, the different versions of songs that we ran through with this too, it was great. Oh. I'm sure your friend will be missing this tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's like, uh, the guy on the cover is uh, John Sweeney, one of our concept <laughs> artists. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Is the centerfold also his penis? <laughs> <laughs> we should have that unlockable. You could see what she's looking at. <laughs> yeah. Get your subscription to Bearskin Magazine today. I'm just fucking with you. And the awkwardness of that moment. <laughs> but it's also such a great moment of levity between the two of them. I don't know. That's kind of a way of her complimenting him or trying to bond with him. Yeah. And it's something I was very conscious of when, like, writing this stuff. It was like, I'm kind of, this is making me uncomfortable here on the page. I have to leave it as is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's your litmus test. Yeah. I'm tired. I love that. Not even tired. Cut to passed out. <laughs> <laughs> this was uh, also the first really dramatic scene we shot. And it became kind of the touchstone for how the characters should look when they're really pushed it's so interesting when she's you know again it's this moment of vulnerability where she says i feel sick and joel's again being very didactic and pushing her away she stands up for herself this is the first time she stood up for herself how about hey ellie i know it wasn't easy but it was either him or me i love that line you know it's either him or me come back to that he can't he can't do it he can't admit that she saved his life So this is, in the story, the first time Joel really is trusting Ellie. And seeing her as pretty much an equal to him. But he has to rely on her to survive in this world. This is one of the first cinematics that we saw, too. And we just, yeah. it's still one of our favorites. We keep coming back to and laughing. Because I love this exchange between the two of them. What about me? You stay here. This is so <laughs> stupid. We'd have more of a fucking chance if you let me help. I am. And you seem to know your way around a gun. You reckon you can handle that? Well, I sort of shot a rifle before. That's right. <laughs> He's like, shit, rats, that's it? Fuck. <laughs> I love that line. <laughs> oh, shit, here's what we got to work with. <clears throat> we usually avoid these kind of cameras that rotate around something that are trying to do too much, but it, it felt like this moment kind of needed it. It's... Yeah, I love it's it. a weird parent kid moment. Yeah. But he's teaching her how to shoot to kill. To get another round in there quick. Listen to me. If I get into trouble. There's a really nice um when I watch like Ellie's performance this balance between she's trying to be a hard ass but you could see in her eyes she's kind of terrified of the situation. Yeah. But even in this there's almost a little bit of excitement there too either whether it's about the reality of her killing isn't real, or if it's just, I have an opportunity to make Joel proud. Opening up. Opening up. You're welcome. Such an interesting look on your face here. Because it's almost like I did good, but then you feel horrified by it. So interesting. It's like, <clears throat> even though uh, Ellie's used to killing, used to seeing this stuff in this world, it was still important to show this is having an effect on her. Right. And you're going to see that kind of carry through throughout the game. Well, it also kind of carries over into this moment as well, too, because I realized what I just put her through. And I love the way that, you know, we took that away from her. It's like almost gingerly. It's like, give me that. 
It's like you can't really compliment it because right. You did good. You yeah, had, there's yeah. no pat on the back. Yeah. But then I turn around and I give her this, and it's like, more like you said, there's a sadness to it. Yeah, it's sad that in this world, these are the things that you have to bond over. Like here, here's your gun. And that's the reward. Yeah. But that knot of understanding is great. Brandon and Naji. There you go. Yep. Brandon, I think, had the hardest audition <laughs> of anyone. Yeah, no kidding. Because I literally almost took off his head. <laughs> not in this scene, not punching him. That fortunately was done by Ruben Langdon, who can punch way better than I can. Leave him alone. And Naji, too, when he came in red for Sam, that had that. It's all right. They're not the bad guys. Just this kid that's kind of terrified to live in this world. Yeah. Oh, man, you hit hard. Man, well, I was trying to kill you. And these, yeah, these two the characters are really showing, they're kind of a mirror of Joel and Ellie's relationship. If you haven't noticed, they don't keep kids. And it's, it's another warning for Joel, like this whole arc for, for uh, Henry and Sam. What's going to happen if you stick with this girl? You're going to go through what these two characters are going going to eventually end up. I do like that Sam is a character that seems genuinely scared because a lot of the other characters can tend to be a little bit more badassy. Mm -hmm. And he's just, he's young and he's scared. And yes. I love that. To me, also comes across very sullen. Like there, yeah. there's like just a little glimmer of hope and joy, but it's almost like any time there is a moment of that, then, then Henry kind of takes that away from him. It, it also gives yeah. Ellie an opportunity to play a mentor of sorts for him. Mm. Yeah. Be safer if we chat there. All right, take us there. Welcome to my office. One thing that I think made Brandon such a great choice for this and the right choice for this is this scene about how much he owned it and the pride that he had in showing off this wonderful camp that they had made for themselves and Kind of like trying to impress Joel, and Joel just come, you know, very nonplussed about the whole thing. He's like, oh, good for you. Yeah, you've done this. And relax. <laughs> We're safe. Well, the interesting thing, I mean, the way I read it is like Joel is impressed, but he's not, he's trying not to show it. He's trying to still <laughs> test this, this kid. But there's a lot of, he sees himself in Henry. Yeah. Very, very much so. And this is, I remember we going back and forth about this because. Oh, yeah, because layout changed. Because initially this was, they were going to go through the camp right. at night. And then we had to change the layout. So we had to go in and re-record these lines. Well, and there's interesting, there's something on the reverse that it doesn't really matter. But yeah. the, when we shot this, the entire time that he was laying out this plan, I was just looking at him. Because I was like, I really care about your plan, kid. I care more about you. It's kind of like poker. You don't play the cards, you play the man. Yeah, one of those fleeting moments where... Kids can be kids. She doesn't seem bothered by all this. Mm, such a powerful line. And Joel completely just dismisses it. You guys were actually doing that in the background while we were doing this scene. This was so great. It wasn't like shot separately. I know, we were just fooling around. <laughs> you guys were like, shut up! <laughs> it just seems like there's a lot of people putting their stock on the fireflies these days. Yeah, maybe there's a reason for that. You don't know I love this standoff, even though it's a sit-off almost between the two of them, where Joel's just pushing him, pushing him for information just to see where, where this kid's grounded. And that nod. Yeah, the, the threat being so subtle, but it's there. Yeah. And that's the other thing, again, that Brandon did with this that everybody else didn't do. They kind of really got in Joel's face, and he didn't, he didn't posture himself that much. It was just like, I'll take care of mine, you take care of yours. And also that he doesn't correct him about your daughter. Mm -hmm. Joel doesn't correct him. He's not, you know, she's not my daughter. Your girl, you want to join us? It goes down tonight. I guess we best rest up then. And I guess that's, that's the most Joel's going to give him. Yeah. That's all Henry needs. Joel sleeping again. These were my favorite scenes. Where I just got to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
No, we're gonna be moving fast, okay? And so the, the idea of these two pairs that like are coming together. Like glue. Got it, glue. God, they were just they so such great brothers. Already? Brandon and Aji did such a great okay. job together. Left. I just remember it was funny because jumping off of this bridge, there's just a, t uh, <laughs> a, rope? a, a line of tape, and then you have to like jump off of it. Because so we were both funny. stepping over it at first. They're like, yeah. no, this is like 50 feet down. I was <laughs> oh, like, right. oh, so we got to do a whole thing. <laughs> it looks ridiculous what we're doing. It's like, ah, oh, with our arms above <laughs> yeah, our head. I know. And this part where you're in the water, we had you on a cart. That's right. And, they and were, we like, just pushed you around. across yeah. <laughs> mocap stage. <laughs> it was actually pretty violent being on that. It was. It was pretty scary. <laughs> this was part of the audition scene that Brandon did that really just kind of helped us realize Henry. we had the right Henry. He's awake. Hey, you. We're Back on. to the salesman. It's like, hey, buddy, everything's okay. <laughs> everything's I know. all right. I really like that about his character, that he's kind of a salesman. You know, Sam's the one who spotted you. You guys are taking quite a bit of water. What's wrong? Hey, Henry! Get back, hey, son! Hey, hey, hey. He's pissed, but he's not going to do anything. You sure about that? Stop! He's confident. He knows he's going to calm you down, but he needs Sam to stay out of the way. Right, just in case. Yeah. Chance of making it, and you did. But coming back for you meant putting him at risk. Stay back. I think there's already the change there. Joel knows it's true. Yeah. Joel wouldn't have come back for him. And even when we were shooting this too, I mean, that's you, you really get into that moment and every time that I felt that hand on my shoulder, it's, it's almost like that Hulk moment where you realize, oh, I, I felt bad for letting you see that part of me because so far I really haven't, in these moments, let that demon out. Okay. I've done what I've had to do, but this is just cold-blooded murder I'm about to do. The thing with Henry, which Brandon really brought to it, which is making light of everything for bad. Sam. Everything is done for Sam. Right. I think he really is intimidated. He is scared in the situation, but he's making a light of it so Sam isn't as scared as he is. Because the second that Sam sees that he's scared, yeah. you know, Sam will be scared. Silver lining kid. This is the longest short scene in the game. <laughs> I had to fit that in there, quit this place from this, since we had it right. in, the, in the first trailer. <laughs> I can't quit you. <laughs> I remember when we first, the very, very beginning of this, when we like did the first table read through this and everything, and we talked about, I asked if there was going to be a moment of just a, a, a light shining through in, in, in this darkness, and you talked about this scene, and at that point it was just really kind of just real easy brush strokes of, of what it was going to be, and it really came into fruition and became this, this. Well, all the characters here have their guard down. It's kind yeah. of unique because usually somebody's lying or somebody's hiding something. Right. And here's like, everybody has their guard down. And they're just talking about motorcycles. You two deserve a little privacy. And you were really giving too on this. We spent a lot of time on this and there was this one scene where you just kind of let me ramble about mm -hmm. you know, we, to where we really feel like we're coming midway into a conversation. I don't remember what was said, but it was just this cool moment. You went more into the details of like with Tommy and where you went and the States and yeah. all that stuff. I think that really helped kind of make this, the, the following takes much more natural. Right, without all the rest of that yeah. stuff, the preamble being there. But I love the turn that he gives right here. It's like the kids have gone to bed now and we can, yeah. we can just talk like adults. Worst part about it all. Animation and lighting, right? If you don't capture these looks in the eyes, this scene doesn't work. Right. The thing that I love about this well, is that he's set up a little office for himself, kind of like what Henry did. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's this... I'm being official, trying to be a grown-up. He's still a kid, and we see it in this moment. I really enjoyed working with Brandon and Najee. Just having them on set was so much fun. They're such Najee great especially, dudes. like Najee's Najee hilarious. We're doing this crazy scene, and we like cut, and then he's like just starting dancing or, or yeah. singing, the, singing whatever you know YouTube hot song at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> you know, song bombing us all day. They were so much fun. I just adore them too. Is everything all right? You, you, you got an opportunity to put so much of you into Ellie. That's just because yeah. I can't write, so I would just listen to Ashley <laughs> talk, and I was like, oh, that's a good line. <laughs> Have a good night. That's giving me way too much credit. 
tells you that you're never scared. It's like Who says that I'm not putting up the defense, making like making joke of it as, as Ellie does. Yeah. And then seeing when she needs to, because that's the only way she's going to cheer him up. She's going to open up to him. And also, she kind of throws out that bone. Like, yeah. you know, scorpions are pretty creepy. Yeah. That's not what I want to talk about. Uh, being by myself. Which, again, all this stuff she's saying here plays into what happens later when she finds out Joel's trying to give her up. He's giving her away to Tommy. Yeah. Those things out there. What if the and it's kind of the same thing we're seeing with Tess what if they're trapped to where she was, again, you, she knows what's going on, he knows what's going on, but it's looking externally for some kind of either comfort or hope or answer or something. All, we're a team now. And then they just always come up empty. Second. I guess one thing I'm just thinking about now, which is all the stuff Sam is going through because he's bitten, is it's probably the stuff Ellie went through when she was first bitten because she thought she was going to turn. And it just happens that she was immune, but so she that's why she kind of do you think that's true? All these realizations she's had. I go back and forth. I mean, I'd like to believe it. That's a powerful thing for essentially. It's kind of sad because that's not what Sam wants to hear. He right. wants yeah. to hear that it's all going to be all right. right. But she doesn't realize that's what No, he death, is, death is terrible. It's a horrible, painful process and you're all alone, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I almost forgot. There. If he doesn't know about it, he can't take it away. All right. This did make me sad because... I'll see you tomorrow. You know, he spent that whole night alone. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, yeah. Know, Henry didn't go back in there. I let him sleep in, just like. Yeah, I let oh, him sleep in. Oh. And that was the last conversation he had. And that always made me so sad after I read that. Because I was like, oh. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. And what would have happened if Henry had gone in there? I mean, Damn. the fact that he. That Henry wasn't there, I mean, plays into, you know, the, the culmination of this scene where he's just racked with guilt. I mean, one thing we're very conscious of when putting the story together is we would have these really kind of dramatic moments that change the characters significantly. And then we would cut to some more time in the future. Yeah. And you'll, so you don't get to see right afterwards what happened to him. And then you get hints of how, they, how this affected the relationship, which is what you get into the, the next gameplay sequence. And this whole thing is... Um, it's a huge change in Joel here, because now he sees this is what's going to happen to me. The same thing that's happening to Henry right now is what would happen to me if I'm going to keep going and let Ellie get hurt. Yeah. And it's like, he's going to, after this moment, he makes the choice, like, I need to give her to Tommy. Oh, my God. Save. Oh, no. I have no idea what that would do to a person to actually see that, to have to do that. Yeah, I remember talking with Brandon about this when he's saying it's all your fault. He's not talking to Joel, he's talking to himself. Yeah. Okay, okay, easy. Yeah, the thing that's cool with this piece, Gustavo's music, is that you're carrying that weight. You're carrying the weight of that emotion of everything just happened onto the next scene, which even though they might not be thinking about Henry and Sam right this moment, but it's just that feeling is lingering going forward. I own that shirt. I still think we should sell off our mocap suits for charity. Unwashed. Jeffrey Pierce. Who is the lady says? Ashley Scott. Hey. Sorry, Ashley Hart. Please tell me you're Oh yes. Ashley Hart. She was married. Oh, we didn't know the place was occupied. We're just trying to make our way through. Through to where? They're all right. But you know these people? I know him. He's my goddamn the chemistry was so good between Two of you them. and Jeffrey. It was amazing how well, and I mean, Jeffrey's just a few years older than me, but it was interesting being, playing the older brother to him. And yeah, we felt like brothers immediately. It was crazy. Oh, well, Jeffrey came, I mean, we almost cast Jeffrey yeah. as Joel. Uh, 
And then once, like, months later, we, we needed to cast Tommy. I was like, oh, well, what's, what's Jeffrey Pierce doing? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for not blowing my head off. Would have been embarrassing, considering you're my brother-in-law. And Ashley Scott, she came really close to being cast as Tess. And yeah. then when we needed Maria, I was like, oh, Ashley Scott. Scott. Every person. There, was, there were uh, no additions for, yeah. for these roles. I love this awkward setup of, of this is how he meets his sister-in-law. How he meets yeah. Jeffrey's, you know, or, or Tommy's wife. Story. Why don't we bring him inside? And you get to see here now how Ellie's starting to become more secretive. Stop. Well, also it's like the way they're standing and everything, it's like Ellie's kind of alone now. Like now it's like Joel is with Tommy and... There's no one familiar with Ellie. It's quite the crew you got here. Yeah, they're good men. This place gives them a second chance. The theme of redemption. Uh, Give this all a second chance. So why'd you leave Boston? We went through this so many times. I've been on quite the adventure. And each one of them I thought was great in its own little version. It was just kind of like trying to pick the right one. But this is where you get to see... <sighs> well, Joel's putting up a front here. I mean, he's, he's trying to... He's pitching his little he, brother. Yeah. <laughs> And it's it's so interesting to see them slip how how they're two different men, but they instantly go back into those roles that they were before. And just by the behavior here, you get um, hints of what happened in those twenty years. Right. How dark things went. Like they're they're playing nice. Right. They were happy to see each other, but now it's like it's oh, right, right the you haven't changed. <laughs> And that's, I mean, that's so true to life. Like, especially with brothers, you go back to that. I push these buttons and you do this. This isn't for me, Tommy. This is for your damn cause. My cause is my family. And I loved, I mean, what Jeffrey was doing posture-wise. Jesus, boy. Putting Joel on the offensive. And now he's just, like, insulting everybody here and insulting his wife. Tommy, I need this. Again, just Joel just expects... I, I tell my little brother to do something, he needs to do it. Right. But I that girl Which is totally there. based on my brother. <laughs> this is how you gonna repay me, huh? Repay you? For all those goddamn years I took care of us. Took care? That's what you call it? I got nothing but nightmares from those years. You survived because of me! It wasn't worth it. And Tommy here, is, I mean, Tommy and Maria show that, that even in this world, this world is horrible, you could find peace in it. Right. You could... You could Build a community. You don't have to resort to these things that Joel has. That line was a great thing that that Jeffrey improved on. Put your hands on me again. It's a good Southern phrase. You okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fine. Oh man, they were coming in from every direction. Then Maria was like, "We gotta run." That's where you see Tommy. Tommy realizes for the first time that Joel really cares for this girl. This isn't just a job. And that's where he has that change. And he's like, oh, crap. I'm... I need to talk to you. This is why he's asking me to do this. Absolutely not. You tell him to go find somebody else. And again, it's just such a real moment between a married couple. It's like... What's that all about? Honor and, and you know, <laughs> doing something for selfishness and everything else. That doesn't play in this world anymore. Those are archaic ideals. I don't want you to go out there because you're going to get killed and we don't owe him anything because I'm sure all she knows is the 20-year-old Joel, 20-year-old version of Joel. Right. Why would you risk your life for that guy? You hate him, essentially. One fuck up and then I turn into one of those widows, okay? And for Ellie, it was, it was important to show that she could just read Joel. She has this bullshit detector that just by the way he's answering her questions, she understands exactly what he asked Tommy to do. Maria. Here we go. Love this moment. Here we go. <laughs> if anything, anything at all happens to him, it's on you. The posture and everything. He knows he's in the wrong. He knows he can't ask Tommy to do this. Yeah. She's thankful, you know. Yeah, I know. I'll take that girl of yours to the fireflies. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, he really cares for you. It's best this way. There's so much more behind it, though, than that, than, than just care. It's... It's Tommy showing that he's the bigger man, that he's the better man. He's allowing his brother to be shallow and well, selfish. Well, he's I mean, I, I think he's, he knows what his brother's been through. 
He knows why he can't go through that again. Which way? Come on. This is probably my favorite scene. What a long day this was. Boys, movies, deciding which. I honestly think this is one of the best scenes that you wrote, Neil. It's bizarre. Get up. Because it says so much about this world and especially Ellie, where she's at and realizing how different and how much of a chasm there is between this world and that. I agree. Goddamn stupid. Well, I guess we're both disappointed with each other then. What do you want? I, I, I think I really like about this scene is that they're both kind of, I guess, being selfish in a way. And yet it's be coming from a place because they really care about each other. Like they don't understand that they both have been through horrible things. And they each think what they've been through has been worse. God, I love that she calls him out on that. What are you so afraid of? How many close calls have we had? Well, we seem to be doing all right so far. And now you'll be doing even better with Tommy. I'm not her, you know. What? And it's like the stakes are high, and it's like, okay, well, then I'm going to drop this bomb. I'm not her. It's like, how many years has it probably been for Joel since he even, like, Don't thought it about it, me. mentioned it? You have no idea what loss is. I think Joel's thought of that name every day, but I don't think he's heard it said. That shove that you gave that was nowhere in the script. I, I think that came out of frustration definitely because when we had come back and we couldn't find it and I wasn't necessarily frustrated with you I was frustrated with us in the scene and I was like oh fuck it's so cold of Joel to do this and I've had people on the team ask me to remove this part that he's being too cold and I'm like no it's like because she's being so vulnerable and he's having these feelings he's trying to shut it down that's why he's being so cold it was so important for me to keep that in there when he says, you're not my daughter, it's almost an insult. And it's kind of the opposite of what he's feeling. This scene was such a great opportunity to show even just like all these mini arcs with characters. You know, we don't have a lot of time and we're not going to, we can, we can only tell Joel and Ellie's story we can't go into such detail with Bill and Tommy and Tess and Marlene. But you get this great resolution between these brothers because you get the full arc of it in just a short, short amount of time. It's like the way I approached it is the seed has been planted. Like when she says, I'll just be more scared. That Joel just needs time. And in time, he will change his mind. Because he doesn't want, he doesn't want any, deep down, he doesn't want anything that will hurt Ellie or so over there, the idea is just this little horse riding montage is he's, that change is brewing. And Gustavo's music doesn't hurt. And what's so great about how this plays out is there's really nothing happening but just this passage of time. That used to be a level that you played through. And just during production cuts, we had to, we changed it. So it, it actually worked out better. It just became this idyllic idea that you never fully reach. You just see it from the outside. Where is this lab of theirs? It's all the way out, University of Eastern Colorado. Pointing out the, you know, this, this moment that there was probably a time when these two used to watch college football together, you mm -hmm. know, and calling out. He's like, go big horns, you know. For our college that we made. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want one of their t shirts so bad, University of East Colorado. <laughs> because Colorado is such a big state. I don't want her coming after you. Sorry for stealing your horse. Well, come back to town. Let's discuss it at least. You know me, my mind's all made up. University, Eastern Colorado. How do I find this lab? in the science building. Looks like a giant mirror and you can't miss it. And the, the idea of offering Joel a place, a place of refuge, a place of redemption. Well, and originally we had some, you know, I think there was a line that we had, that I threw in there or something. It was like maybe someday or something. It was just two on the nose. And we ended up saying, we don't need that. You know, this needs to be a... The look is enough. Well, and the offer to me is enough. Mm hmm
about to hear Steve Bloom. Lovely Steve. <laughs> Silk throated Steve Bloom. <laughs> Yeah, no shit. I'm dead. Or I will be soon. Got me so what a macabre scene, though. I love that Ellie's just kind of thumbing through things. She's pretty frustrated with not having found the fireflies, not knowing where to go. Come on. Looking for the others. Man, I love Steve Jim's voice. He makes me want to clear my throat. Trying to save the world. It's mean. Do you know where that is? I know the city. Is it far? It Again, this is where we really start kind of getting the sense of how Joel and Ellie are just chasing their tail. There's, you know, chasing a phantom. Get down. Uh, for me, is what, what I wanted from this is not to overplay it, not to like have Ellie cry or scream or. There's probably a lot of panic that happened between this moment and the next. Well, and what a great, see. what a great line too. You got to tell me what to do. When almost the entire game, she said, "Don't tell me what to do." And here is where we've been lying to everybody when we've been saying you don't play as Ellie. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Asked point blank, do you play as Ellie? No. I nope. know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in this moment, a, a lot of this project and the story has been constructed around this moment, which is where the roles flip. Where now it's Ellie that has to protect Joel and essentially bring him back to life. Bye bye, Bunny. It's a pretty cool reveal, too. The pan up. And and there's Ellie as the hunter. <laughs> so what we wanted here is also oh. is like, you don't know exactly what happened to Joel, what's the state, how much time has passed. Poor Buddy. But the way that she's doing that, you can see that she's been doing this for a while. You'll just startle it. Remember how tired your arms got holding that bow stretched? That for bow, it was so heavy. And I, re <laughs> I remember that I was shaking and I was like, hey guys, <laughs> <laughs> this is really heavy. <laughs> And there's David, Nolan North. Nolan North, ladies and gentlemen. Reuben Langdon is James. Reuben Langdon, ladies and gentlemen. Here's my friend James. Remember, like uh, I showed Nolan the part of the game early on, and he's like, "Oh, I want to. You got to get me a part somewhere in there." I'm like, "Okay, I got something for you. <laughs> <laughs> got a role for you." But I will, I will say this, because I mean, I was on set just for a, a brief part of this, but that's when I, I mean, I've always been a fan of Nolan's work, but that's when I was truly awed by him at how he crafted this character. He took what you had and just really brought it to life. Yeah. I told him the most important part is don't play a bad guy. Yeah. This guy's charismatic. We have to believe that people will follow this guy. And that Ellie could trust him. Yeah. Buddy boy can go get it. He comes back with what I need. The deer is all yours. Anyone else shows up? You put one right between my eyes. That's right. It just shows what versatility Nolan really has. Yeah, that voice, I mean... It's so comforting. It is very comforting, but it's interesting now that I'm hearing it. Knowing what we went through, I get... Take that rifle. I get... It's a little unsettling now, hearing it. Because <laughs> I'm like, ugh. Back up. It's a weird gameplay thing, but we went through a version where, like, okay, she can only carry one long gun at a time, so we have to put the bow on the, on the ground. And they're like, no, it's going to be two guns. Okay, well, let's put the bow back on her backpack. No, no, it's it's. She can carry <laughs> <laughs> and we removed the scope. They used to have a scope on it. And we're like, oh, we don't have to have the scope. Bring him with us. I remember being so relieved in this scene when we switched the gun out, and I got to put the bow down. I was like, ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love how David complies too. How he just kind of like submits to a little girl. Well, the thing is, is like he knows the stories. He knows what happened in the university, really and he's trying to figure you. this kid out. He's this whole sequence. He's sizing her up. How how early or how late on in the script did you write David? Why? 
I mean, it was written not that long before we shot it. Because remember, you it like started like from a, a pretty small. King. Yeah, it was referred to as the Cannibal King. We just knew that Ellie was going to run into the worst of mankind, and she would persevere and come out on the other side. Uh, but then once like Nolan came in and started like putting David together, it was like it became a lot more interesting to make him this really charismatic guy that is just infatuated with Ellie. Now when gun? things get real, you see who kind of glimpses of who he really is. Because there is that moment in that other scene where he makes it seem like, okay, you're in control, you're in control, but she never was. Yeah. Had some practice. <laughs> well, you handled yourself pretty nice back there. It's cool about, about David and the conversation I heard with Nolan about him is that he's trying to win Ellie over by being honest with her. And here's the part where he's like, I feel like she's ready, I'm going to kind of reveal myself. And I think, like, I could still get her to come around. Now, you see, I believe that everything happens for a reason. Sure. The other interesting thing, uh, thematically, that's in, uh, everything happens for a reason is the same thing that Marlene really believes. That everything happens, like, it's something she repeats to Joel at the end. But you're kind of seeing how all these characters are just, how much they're willing to go for what they believe in. When you talked about like being surprised by your own writing, was that a moment like that, or was that something that you had intentionally done to where those characters were going to? No, I just I think it's just something you think about, and there's a theme that just kind of sticks around in the project, and mm -hmm. then characters end up talking about that stuff because you're thinking about it all the time. Traveling with a little girl. You see, everything happens for. Again, another one of those moments where. You think Ellie's got control. Don't get upset. It's not your fault. Yeah, and then James there. I'm just a kid. I love that. James yeah. the gun. <laughs> no way, David. I'm not gonna let her go. It was such a small role, but I really like what Ruben added there. And that the dynamics between James and David. Uh, there's there's conflict between these two characters, but there's still respect, and he's still listening to David, even though he's questioning his leadership right there. No, that's not your concern. Part of me, the, the the way I read that was every time he looked, every time James looked at David, it was like, who the fuck are you right now? Mm, what are you yeah. doing? Yeah. Like he was putting on a show, and he saw it. To me, it's interesting how David almost treats Ellie like Quarry. Like, you know, you're a sport. Yeah. Again, Ellie having this kind of bullshit detector, you see her scared here because I think she realizes there's something really wrong with these guys. I don't know what. I just need to get away. So interesting from watching this, though, I would completely believe David. I would totally, I'd follow the guy. It's crazy. It's because you're a cannibal. <laughs> this little moment, this breath, before going to see what's downstairs. And again, for players, it's, it's, it would have been like a while now since they've seen Joel. Joel? Once again, Joel's asleep. <laughs> I love how these roles have switched too. Where now it's, you know, the protected taking care of the protector. I used to be open. And then we're like, oh, we should probably stitch that <laughs> it up. It was also on the other side. We had to come back and reshoot it. <laughs> oh, continuity. <laughs> Actually, this one, we, uh, I remember uh, we shot this one again. Because this is going Naughty Dog method, everybody can like say the two cents. Amy Puckett, one of our coordinators, said, "Where's Ellie's backpack?" And we shot it without thinking about Ellie's backpack. And it was like, "Oh, we should bring <laughs> it back in and use it as a pillow." Right. It's like such a, nice, a cool little touch. You're gonna make it. Yeah, those shivering things was pretty cool. Yeah. The towel thing, right? Let's well, see. That. You did that. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, he still... obviously he animated it. But great moment of them falling asleep next to each other too again her watching over him <laughs> it 
to me, you really get a sense of the oppressiveness of the world with all the introduction with all of these different kinds of enemies. It's like you, you feel like you're fighting this multi-front battle. It's not just these are the bad guys, and it's so clear. Yeah, and just how much Ellie's now willing to put herself on the line to just get them away from Joel. Wakey, wakey. It's interesting how much audio has made all of this way creepier. We were watching it without audio. It's like the foley of what he's cutting up and back and stuff. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> Time to eat. <laughs> and that's the first time you actually see what it is that you've heard yeah. them refer to it. No, I just, you, you, this is the first time you just see it, and it's, it's again. I, I really wanted to downplay the whole cannibalism thing. It's just, just something they have to do. Killing? Super. <laughs> he comes to bring her a tray of food. It's, it's, just, it's. This was so cool to watch when you guys were, were doing the scene. It's just like this battle of the wills where he's just trying to like get in her head and she will not let him. She won't give in. Yeah, this was one of my favorite scenes to shoot because some human helping on the side. There was there's just so much there. I mean the cannibalism and then him being all like rapey and molesty. <laughs> Like, I don't know, I'm, I'm a fan of the dark stuff, which you know. So when I read it, I was like, yes! Um, which makes me sound like an awful person, which I am. <laughs> so, I don't know what that says about me that I wrote this. <laughs> I know. Um, I remember I, that night that I went home, I was just in a funky mood. We have to take care of our own, by any means necessary. It was like it was a it was a cooler thing to read about it than after actually having to go in there. It, yeah. it was really hard to do. Yeah. You gonna chop me up into tiny pieces? But see again, I see David being this very gracious person. There's I no mean, way. everything he's saying is is kind of true. It's like you kill to survive, we kill to survive. It's just what you do in this world. But again, Ellie just is feeling there's something else here. I still don't look at David as a bad guy at this point. Yeah. Oh, that's what too is like you, we, you were talking to me before we got this whole David thing, and it's like, you want to work with Noel North? I want to do a scene with Noel North. I want to do this. <laughs> and it's like, and I'm like, oh, we cast Noel North. Like, great. I'm like, but you don't act with him at all. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, I feel super lucky I got to work with him because he's 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 the king. He's so fun to work with. I mean, he really owned it. He threw himself into it, like yeah. darkness and all. And again, talking to him about it, he's like, I don't see him as dark. I just. Just, this is just what he wants. That's it. I think David believes his own line of bullshit. Or whether it's bullshit or not, I think David believes that he yeah. actually is doing the right thing. I mean, that's the other thing we discussed with Nolan. is like there's a religious part to David, even though I never wanted that to come out in the script. But he really kind of believes that he's been sent here and he has this destiny mm. that nothing can really harm him. What am I supposed to tell the others now? And you really took that on on the chin that day too. Man, this whole sequence with David, I was so beat up and bruised. I say, I remember you week. came back the following day with bruises. <laughs> I was like, guys, look at me. <laughs> I had bruises we're like, everywhere. Oh, that's, that looks bad, but we're making we're a game do now. Some more <laughs> yeah. I love that you made it the little girl that broke your fucking finger. Yeah, that was that was a good call. Neil. Well, he calls her stupid little girl, so she throws it back in his face. I also like that she gives him her name under her conditions, which is, I'm going to give it to you, but I'm going to insult you. Right. I also like the fact that Ellie is still so strong that even though she's in that cage, she's still... She's still kind of in control. Yeah. But it's a, it's a much stronger, that, that's a different strength than you'd shown anywhere else in the game before. It's like that winter was a really, really hard winter for you. Here's another funny scene. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, and you're actually, you're, you're wrong. I did get to actually uh, act with Nolan in this. Nolan was a trooper and let me torture him. Although we did record over his lines with Liam O'Brien. That's right, the lovely lob. The lovely Liam O'Brien. 
This actually is my favorite scene in the game. Is it really? And, and it, after I saw you guys shoot it, and then when I saw the animation and everything, I was like, I just love the scene. What is it about it you love so much? I love that Joel is just quietly violent. Mm. And then you pop off the guy. This is his job, cap. right? This is what he's good at. Yeah. He's well, just like, and it's also for me when we talked about this. It's like Joel going back to this. Like, all right, you want you want this guy? I'll be yeah. this guy. We've spent almost the entire game for him to to stay away from being that guy. But in this, scene, it's like I still it's, it's know. It's like how we're to going fuck back to the moment in the beginning we saw him with Robert and Tess. Yeah. This is what he does. This is what he's done in this world. Yeah, it's a no-brainer. He's good at it. Chokes him out, and breaks his neck right there, all for the benefit of that guy. And it's like, if there's any like notion that someone has hurt Ellie, then I'm gonna make every single one of you guys pay. Yeah. That's all right. I believe it. No way. And actually, this is the scene where I think he got beat up the most. Yeah. Where you did? Yo, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had bruises over my whole entire body. It was ridiculous. Yeah, this wasn't stunts. This was you. <laughs> yeah. I warned you. The thing that I, I love about this scene is how much Ellie's using her brains and her physicality, like everything, to like get out of this situation. Right there. Roll on my sleeve. Look at it. I'll play along. Ruben helped so much during this part because choreographing sort of all of the little movements were so particular. And I think <laughs> everybody sort of knew at this point that I kept hurting people. <laughs> so Ruben so was like, you have to give her the foam knife because she will hit me. <laughs> You were beating the shit out of that foam pad. I don't know what you were channeling. <laughs> I have a lot of anger. Stop! Stop! Fucking duck me! Okay, it's me! It's me! We did very few takes of this. This was like maybe three takes. Yeah. He tried to. I just felt like so intense with each one. It was like, yeah, that's. We got it. That's that's enough. That's the first time that, you know, Ellie and, and Joel like. Brace was that, that physical contact. Yeah. And it's such a great choice, I think, for you to... The dialogue wasn't important. Yeah, it was just a gesture. So it was like, just let the music take over. And it's, it's the same theme from when, you know, he's, his daughter dies. This was the scene where you got the most emotional. You almost cried in this scene. Oh, that's right. We don't have to do this. You know that, right? First time Joel questions the whole idea of this mission. But in a different way, though. Before yeah. it was, why am I wasting my time doing this? And now I'm saying, maybe that's not what we need. Maybe that's not maybe the answer. Maybe it's not worth it. Well, yeah, it's not worth it. But I love that this comes off of what your, you said was one of your favorite moments, which was the, the, giraffe, the sequence. giraffe sequence. That fleeting moment where Ellie gets to be a kid one last time yeah. after the whole David sequence. And how you even played that visually with you just kind of catch the very last end of the giraffes moving there. So here we go. Oh, Ellie's dead. <laughs> I mean, such, I'm sure it was such an intentional thing to call back to the very beginning to where Joel finds himself in this situation again. And after everything that we've been through, it's like, I won't, I won't go through this. And Hands in the air. Just the, again, that irrational, maddening, desperate calling for help. I need... From this point forward, it's like the beginning backwards, where if this is the point of Sarah dies, like now you're about to do the carry sequence. Yeah. 
then you like play as Ellie walking, like viewing Joel from yeah. the outside. And then you end on the shot with Ellie, so it's like the beginning reversed. Sorry about that. They didn't know who Let you were. Let me see Marlene again. And Ellie? She's all right. They brought her back. Uh, the discussions I had with Merle about this scene is, again, her desperation to find someone that will understand, that will empathize with her decision to kill Ellie to save humanity. And she's hoping she could get that out of Joel because he's the only other person that has cared for Ellie the way she has. And she can't get it out of it. I just think it was such a great way to bookend to kind of start and begin with Marlene. And it's so great that they were able to capture just the strength that she has, even when she was sitting in that chair. And again, she's completely empathetic, even though she's supposed to be antagonistic. It's a very similar line to what David says. You don't have to worry about her anymore. We'll take care. I worry. Just let me see her, please. You can't. She's being prepped. This is one I've always seen Joel in the most parental role. Surgery. The doctors tell me the cordyceps, the growth inside her, has somehow mutated. It's why she's immune. Once they remove it, they'll be able to reverse engineer a vaccine. Yeah, her performance here was just but it grows stellar. Hard. So flawless. It does. I remember talking with the, the music guys that uh, were putting a lot of good stuff as music, and, I was, and the first few passes were there was this dark music that was playing here once Marlene reveals that Ellie's going to die. And I was like, you can't, we can't play Marlene as bad because she's not bad. She's not. I mean, she's trying to save everybody. I knew her since she was born. And if anything, I told them, was like, you can go dark with Joel, because again, when Ellie's life is on the line, Ellie's in danger, he lets himself slip back into the murderer, the killer, right. however you want to view it. It's so interesting. I wonder how many players, like, especially in this moment right here, how many sided with Marlene and how many think that Joel was actually the wrong one. It's like, dude, listen to what she's saying. But at the same time, this is the theme of the game for me right here is uh, as a father, you will kill everybody else to save your, 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 your kid. Uh, and that, that has always been kind of the, the through line for me is Joel's willing to go to the end of the line, meaning sacrifice humanity to save Ellie. Again, Robin, Robin Atkin Atkin Downs. Downs. Guess what's going to happen to him? <laughs> But this was so cool, too, because I mean, we've seen all the way through both cinematic and gameplay, you know, Joel is able to take on everybody, but just this moment of resolve that I'm going to wait for my moment. And it almost looks like he's a beaten, defeated person. Give me an excuse. And that grimace right there. It's like, no, he's not. <laughs> Which way? Yeah, again, the way you've interpreted Joel is like a man who lets his emotions get the better of him here has to keep them in check. You see how like he wants to destroy this man and everybody here for what they're doing to Ellie, but he has to wait. He has to catch the right moment. I say keep walking. Bam. Where was the operating room? And again, just such a brutal scene. There's no threat here. It's, it's just time. Time is the threat. Now I'll let you die. This scene used to originally be all in the operating room. And Joel wasn't carrying Ellie. He, like, uh, killed Merlene and the doctors in the operating room. And then Peter Field, designer, just kept bugging me. He's like, I feel like we have to play this part. It's, you know, you have to carry Ellie out yourself. You can't just be, like, hinted at. And we ended up switching the whole structure of this thing. He was right. It was like it worked way better. That was, that was one of, another one of those moments where we're like, we're done. We've got it. No, we don't. <laughs> as, a, as a cinematic, it, it was. It was. I thought it was perfect. But as part of as a bigger part of the game, uh, it was weaker than letting you play through some of it. She won't feel anything. And the only hesitation Joel has is that this is what Ellie wants. 
And it's such a great decision to show just cut to this, give, you know, give the audience, the player, just one last moment of, well, what did he choose? Just to, just to sit in that decision. It was also important to show the lie against the reality because the lie has so much weight here at the end. Throughout the game, Joel has never lied to Ellie. He might have disagreed or he might have dismissed her, but he's never outright lied to her. What happened? And for me, it was, this was the moment I decided to lie. We found the fireflies. Turns out there's a whole lot more like you, Ellie. People that to me, it, it hurt to say these things. Because once she started believing, once Ellie started believing that I actually had something, that I was someone, you're basically telling Ellie, you're not special, you're not important, and everything you've done was for nothing. I'm taking this home. Yeah, in the first few versions of the scenes, there's like Ellie had all these questions like, sorry, what happened? Why? Who was there? Why would they let you take me out with the gown still on? And... And it just was better if she said nothing. And she just turned her back to him. And again, just to show how far Joel's willing to go to remove any threat for Ellie. I mean, we had talked about this before where, you know, she obviously has that bullshit detector. Mm -hmm. Let me go. And I just felt like I knew you were lying. Please. You know, I feel like, I feel like you Ellie knows you're lying. Go to the end. So, original ending for this, hey, way back when we put the outline for the story together, is that Ellie believed the lie and they went off to Tommy's, and it was kind of like this wide tracking shot as you see them kind of getting smaller and smaller walking off to Tommy's. But as we went through the story back when I was and the characters got more and more developed, it's like it didn't feel wrong. honest. It didn't feel like Ellie would buy into all of it. And she got bit too. We didn't know what to do. I remember we went over and over and over this scene. And little things changed. Says, but every time I, la I sat and watched you tell this story, I was just you know, we can be all poetic, raptured by it. It was so easy to listen to you tell this story. I'm still waiting for my turn. Ellie. Her name was Riley, and she was the first to die. And then it was Tess. And then Sam. None of that is on you. You don't understand. I struggled for a long time with surviving. And you, no matter what, you keep finding something to fight for. Now, I know that's not what you want to hear right now. Swear to Interesting me. hearing arguments around the office uh, about how people interpret that last Swear line, that last that okay from Ellie. You said about the fire Whether it's you. okay, I believe you, or okay. I could put this behind us, or okay, I don't trust you anymore and it's over. Okay. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. We certainly, this is the, for some of, for some of the scenes, this is the first time we had a chance to take a look at it and it was, it was interesting to kind of, in retrospect, after everything that we've been through, be able to kind of recall what we were thinking on that day and then, you know, two and a half years later, <laughs> how we I feel know, about these it. things. It's, it's interesting we're ending this on the credits because there's so many people that have, all these people have put the story together, right? I mean, whether it's artists or programmers or without all these people, none of this comes through. It doesn't matter how good the story is or the performances. Or, there's hundreds of hands that this goes through. Yeah and gets different kind of interpretations throughout the way until you end up with the final thing that uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. <laughs>